Greeting, my beloved black people. Welcome back to the plight and struggle of black people in America. And as you know, a lot of times we'll have our prominent black people series on Sundays. And we have another prominent black person today uh, from Dallas, Texas. <clears throat> and she's a Kwete Tahemba. And she's also the Pan-African Connection organizer and has been since 1989. We're talking 33 years and counting. So without further delay, I'll bring the fist in. Hey, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. Revolutionary greetings, Brother Lorenzo. Thank you so much for all that you do. And thank you for this podcast. Thank you for your your undying love for your people. Oh, yeah. And so I'm just happy to uh, be able to share in this good energy and good vibe with you this morning. This afternoon. That is so, so wonderful. And I appreciate that. And when you said the revolutionary green and all this good stuff, it makes me think about my first introduction to Pan-African Connection. Mm -hmm. And the thing about that that's so interesting, <clears throat> it would probably absolutely be improper for me to not uh, mention my introduction to the creator of Pan-African Connection. Just by coincidence, <clears throat> I met Bandelli before he had Pan-African Connection. But mm. I'm certain he had a vision for Pan-African Connection. Uh, we were in a class together at uh, El Centro Community College, downtown Dallas, a speech mm. class, not for impediments, it's like for public speaking. And it was a huge class. It was a very diverse class. Uh, the sister that whose class, the instructor, was a sister, a uh, very vibrant sister. And the class was huge, and it was predominantly black, males and females, and then Caucasian, and then Latino. It was so huge and so diverse, like I said. But anyway, I noticed, and this is the first time I ever even heard of Pan Africanism, but Ben mm -hmm. Daly was on it. He was on it. And that's why I met him. I didn't really know nothing about it. And he spoke it all the time. And what was so interesting, I noticed that the sisters were giving him the blues, <laughs> the black women in the class. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. I didn't really know really the root of that or anything because, like I said, Pan Africanism was new to my ears. You know, I mm -hmm. hadn't heard it. Uh, we're talking about 82, probably 1982. Mm -hmm. I was 22 years old. I'm not sure the age of Ben Delian. I was born in 1960, February 13. I'm 62. <laughs> he was born 58. I mean, 53. He was born at 53. Okay, mm -hmm. wow. He did really well. I thought he was my age, so he was a bit older than me. And he seemed my age, so he did a really good job. And uh, I tell you what, however the sisters dealt with him, he handled the situation, and he stayed on task. And mm -hmm. that so happened one day, because I just retired last year from the U.S. Postal Service on 30, and so I would be by Jefferson and uh, Beckley and stuff sometimes. Worked there 32 years, retired. But anyway, one day, I don't know what y'all had out there, but y'all had something outside of the shop that caught my eye. I don't know if it was a red, black, and green flag or whatever it was, but I didn't know what the building was, but something drew the attention to the uh, shop. So I went in. <laughs> I went in. You and Bandelli was in there. I didn't know he had the shop. That mm -hmm. was at Jefferson, right at Beck, on that corner. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's when I first saw it. And then I've been a patron and supporter ever since then. So we talked, yeah, yeah 1989, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's you know, um, uh, yeah, you're 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 correct because Brother Bandelli, um, my late husband, uh, he it was definitely his vision to, to create <laughs> the uh, Pan African Connection Bookstore. We he were both that. members of. He had been a member of the All African People's Revolutionary Party, which is a revolutionary Pan African organization. Uh, you know, whose objective is to. Uh, to move forward to a United States of Socialist Africa. So, and Kwame Ture was a member of this organization. And so we okay. had chapters all over. So mm. of course we had a chapter in Dallas. He uh, he was Absolutely. born in Cleveland, Ohio, but he came Ben Daly was? Mm-hmm. Ben Daly, okay, okay. Born in Cleveland. Yeah. And uh, so he uh, joined uh, APRP, All African People's Revolutionary Party. And so 
the bookstore was really created as a vehicle and a tool to really continue that work and to Absolutely. organize our people towards Pan-Africanism yeah. and pull them into uh, organizations, right? Hopefully mm -hmm. a Pan-African organization, but if but any organization is better than no organization. So the Pan-African right, right. Connection Bookstore was a place that people could come. And of course, as you said, Vandelli was uh, consistent in Absolutely. his uh, ideology. Yeah. He would walk through the door, he would say, what's up, African? Or, hey, African, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And then yeah. some folk like the sisters might say, hey, no African, don't be calling me no African. I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I wasn't born in, I wasn't born in Africa, <laughs> right, I'm a right. black man, you know? Yeah, so yeah. Vandelli, you know, we so it was a place you could come and raise your conscious consciousness, right? A place yeah. you could come and get a little bit of revolutionary uh, a foundation that you couldn't mm -hmm. get anywhere else, right? it, or didn't get because it was uh, at Pan African Connection that I was exposed to a lot of the mindset that we need and knowing and loving and caring about our ancestors and dealing through ceremonies with libation and all that. I got exposed to that all at Pan-African Connection. And I have since come to know that loving and caring and protecting our ancestors, everything, character, works and all is crucial to us as a people. See, so people yeah. have said, what would Jesus do? I'll say, what would our ancestors want us to do? That's what I would say. And then your ancestors yeah. are guiding you, right? But the one thing your ancestors want you to to um, to do and to is to have good character, right? Absolutely. See, that's, that's crucial, and that's why, unfortunately, a lot of demise that our people are going through. And see, the society will paint the picture, though. That's the bulk of our people. This horrific lifestyle crime and all that that's not our bulk that's just what they keep you know pushing and this that and the other but we've got to get involved with our youth our generation and i contend we have four generations at all time we've got to blend our generational knowledge and experiences together collective as a people for our own well-being you see and that's why we're in the schools speaking of the schools <laughs> Because, you know, I think a lot of different times and things out the box, and I know certain people with certain mindsets. Uh, mm -hmm. Black Men Who Care Incorporated, we're having a uh, program at Roosevelt High School February the 2nd. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the sister. She's a local sister, Dr. Mm -hmm. Candace Bledsoe. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, Candace Lucas Bledsoe. Well, she's going to be our keynote speaker, and I was hoping that uh, you, if you could, get some of the African drummers to come and be a part of that. That would be so lovely. And I haven't been at a function at auditorium, but I think I sent you a video of it. It's mm -hmm. a wonderful auditorium. If I haven't, mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I would love to hear those drums in there. Can you imagine that? Wow. Well, just text so, me the information, the date. I will. I will. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I thought of it. But yeah, and uh uh Roseville is not far from your place of business. Could right. you actually call it that a place of business? Yeah, I, 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 and I'm they're doing a lot of good work. So you all are having a program? What is, yes, what is February it? 2nd, 9.30, 10.30 a.m. at Franklin D. Roosevelt High School in that mm -hmm. beautiful auditorium I sent you a video of. So Dr. Kansas Bledsoe is the keynote speaker for us. And I just thought it'd be so great if you could come and bring some of those drummers so the children could see and experience that. Yes. That combination, I think, could be great. Absolutely. Uh, great. Yeah, and we've uh, uh, partnered with Roosevelt, but we're also about to partner with uh, Cedar Crest Elementary School, which is a block up the street on mm. Bonnie View. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. terrible. Guess what? Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know I was going to go this way, but this state of Texas, the school mm -hmm. district, and let's talk DISD too. And DISD, the uh, proficiency, minimum proficiency, and DISD the, is 48%. Uh, and uh, math, I think it is. And then in the state, is 49%. Okay. And then in reading uh, for DISD, it's like 43%. And state, 45%. Which says, first of all, the whole state is below 
and that's horrible. But this school we're going to uh, partake on, the elementary school, their numbers are 22% proficiency or above in math and reading, which means 78% are failing. And guess what? The population is. 60% of that school is black. And it said 99% are, I forgot the language, but there's something linked to poverty. Yeah. So we're going to turn that school around. Oh, yeah. Watch and see. That's great and wonderful. So, and we're all going to be a part of them. This is what I know. Like you said, Bandelli from Cleo. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, North Philly, straight out the ghetto. See. And so those type of neighborhoods are dear to my heart. And Dallas is a great city. Dallas has a lot of good people here. All we have to do is unite and utilize. Dallas is a city of cliques, period. I know you know that. But it's cool. As long as the cliques have a proper mindset to get together and handle our work for these babies. And stay in your clique. Ain't nothing wrong with cliques if the cliques doing the right thing. Nothing wrong mm -hmm. with a clique. You feel me? <laughs> so we're going to do this. I know we are. I know we can. I know we will. Yes, sir. I'll talk to Let me know Absolutely. how I can help for sure. Well, mm -hmm. that February second thing. If you can get them drummers there, that'll be helpful. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate everything that you've done. Continue to do. You even still have programs. You had Commissioner Price and Jim Schultz that wrote the book, The Accommodation, about all this racism that's been going in Dallas since slavery to about 1986, I think. Something like that. The we, one. Have a, we have a lot of programs. Um, yeah. We don't have as many as we used to pre-COVID, but we definitely okay, okay. have a lot of uh, programs that we're still Yeah, and they're doing. coming. They're coming more and more, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you allowed uh, my dear friend, uh, Mayhem the Mentor, come with his two books, right? Yep. Uh, Black Massacres and, and Black Excellence. And that went yep. really well. You know, I was yeah, able to yeah. interview a guy the next day that showed up for the book signing. Oh, good. that was so great! Yeah, that was so great. So, yeah, black people united oh, will never I be defeated. Oh, I don't know. Can I absolutely, ask absolutely. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. But I don't. I don't think I have meeting full of books in right now. I think I'm out. No, I, 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 don't, I don't think so. But if they were, they would be over there where Francis Chris Welsing and all those books are. You know, over there where uh, Naeem Akbar and all that. Where are you at? I'm doing an interview on a podcast, but I'll be finishing this soon. Uh, well, we <laughs> yeah, we're going to handle all it. Right. We're going to talk. Say, uh, where were you born and raised? I was born in Waco, Texas. Okay. Well, you are native yeah, Texas. Right up the road. But like yeah. you say, uh, Texas is a little peculiar, right? Uh, in so many ways. From, it's a lot of different from East Coast, West Coast. Ooh. You know, because Extreme. my husband used to say in Cleveland, they had black history. You know, they had black, black history all the way through their schooling, right? It was not a I question that. You know, yeah, ever was, since it started, it started in 1976. Right. Come on, and that's history, the sad part. So the many black school, people, they had black the history classes, but in Texas, I don't think we had all of that, right? We didn't guess, get all of that. Guess what else we had? I'm not exactly sure how Cleveland did, but in Philadelphia, all the way one through 12, no matter the school, every week, the same day, same time, there was an assembly program. Period. Mm. And it was for different things. It might be addressing problems. It might be for being informative. And it might be just entertainment for the students. Mm. They don't do nothing here that I've seen in Texas to try to see that the children feel good and have fun. Enjoy yourself while you're learning. Nothing about the children having fun. Nothing. Mm. That's not right. And it's not accidental or coincidental or none of that. When I started uh, volunteering in DISD in West Dallas Project, George Washington Carver Learning Center, they said they're teaching the children how to read by word memorization. You're talking about Not a person that can't read. What word memorization? They don't know the words. So they set them up for failure, right? And they also did that uh, social promotion. The fellow might couldn't do fourth grade work, 
But because he's this age, well, we putting you in the field. And also this, and this is the nation. They go by the failure rate of third graders to determine how many prisons to build. So what that tell you? That's why black people united would never be defeated. We got the resources now. We have everything we need except for the mindset to be a united people. Once we acquire that and we're at the threshold, I'm certain of it. This is mm -hmm. only popping for us. Mm -hmm. yes, and it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, but we do have to get organized, right? It can't be uh, one volunteer here, uh, each one teach one. No, we have to, our, our thinking has to be on a much grander scale, right? We have Absolutely. to not just worry about be teaching one child, each one teach one, but no, we need to create larger numbers. Uh, our organizing must, uh, you know, grab more than just one, right? Sometimes. And when that's the case, we got to talk about those things that you're talking about. And when we talk about it, we got to be about it. You see? So people that are like-minded, like us, we're communicating. We're putting stuff out there for people to see there are avenues and lanes and places that you can contribute to to help. Mm -hmm. But this is something that just hit my mind today. And I just put on my Facebook thing today. Mm -hmm. This I really never thought about it, but now it hit me. A big part of the problem, unfortunately, like why a lot of men don't volunteer in the schools, black men specifically. Sadly, it just hit my mind today. A big part of it is a lot of those black men can't volunteer at the schools because they have criminal records. Many, right? So once you got criminal record to volunteer, you got to go through the background and approval check. And once you got the criminal record, sorry, you can't come. And it never hit my mind till today. I had a back and forth on the Facebook with a dude because a lot of our people think there's nothing wrong with black people using the N word. And like, even we are N's, and that's terrible. But we had a back and forth, and it turned out really good because at the end of the day, I said to the brother, My point is, is that the United States doesn't target any of its people except black people. And I think that kind of got him to see my point. And he had earlier in the back and forth had said something about N-word is far from a big problem, whatever however he put it. But my thing is, any of our problems are important. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that so many of our people don't see the detriment to believing that we are in the N-word thing. And we are not that. I, I really don't think it's as many of us as it appears to be, but I do know it's within every one of our generations that we have too many black people that embrace that word as us, for sure. And we can fix, I contend, we can fix all of our problems and will. Absolutely. Yes, exactly, you know. Absolutely. Well, and nobody can nobody can solve our problems but us, right? Absolutely. I mean, sometimes we look to other folks to solve our problems. We think money going to solve our problems, but it's not. You know, it's going to take, um, like you say, a, a collective organizing a study process so people can figure out who they are and where they've been and where they need to go See? uh so but but it's not it's not just something that falls out the sky we can't expect for any celebrities to free you or give you the consciousness that you need it's going to have to come from a from a a, a collective pan-african organization but if it's definitely gonna have to come from a group a collective study group a collective group not well, just this, one or two whatever well the thing of it is dallas got a whole bunch of clicks so all we need is for a few of these clicks with willingness that's the thing we we got differences but our likeness our likenesses are much more important yeah 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 go ahead a lot more important than our differences and, and Dallas has enough like-minded black people. Even this one fella, Albert Thomas, I saw him on. Sorry. Go ahead, I'm keep sorry. going. Go ahead. No, we don't, but I can send you something. Yeah, but for y'all that are still here listening, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll this take brother, Albert Thomas, told me that there are 33,000 black millionaires in the mm -hmm. DFW area. <clears throat> wow. I don't, I don't know if you heard that. Did you hear that? Uh, mm -hmm. This this fellow Albert, yeah, that's what he said, and I'm like, that's great because a youth mentoring organization with 501c3 can get a lot of financial help right here locally, 
And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of good people. And I mean, people, but specifically a lot of good black people here in Dallas with resources, mm -hmm. with kindness, with care, but don't necessarily see an avenue they want to partake in. And a lot of us, unfortunately, can care and do care, but do not want to be visibly seen getting involved in a fight. Mm -hmm. you see? And Somebody ringing my doorbell. Can Okay, well, go ahead, baby. You go ahead and do your okay, thing. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. All right, go ahead. Sign. I'm going to wrap it up. Go ahead, I'm going to wrap it up. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Uh, no problem. Let me see which one I need. Oh, my God.